Joe. <laughs> What's up, dudes? Found my crybaby wa. Looks like my whammy's getting a little loose here. I hate when that happens. Coming off? Oh, is it the structure itself? Ah, oh, you son of a bitch! Do I hear? No, I get the fucking plate on the back. You know these fucking bridge. You know the original Floyd Rose. Okay? <laughs> Don't fucking get me off on a rant just to start this fucking video out. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. What's that? Fucking worthless. Listen to that. Ah! You fucking piece of shit. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Oh, sure. It'll be fucking coming off in a fucking second as it's working its way out. Um, this is like a Floyd Rose 2. The original Floyd Rose used a uh, nylon washer on the bottom and on the top. And then they would sort of like go through the center bolt and they would bolt on the bottom and had a nylon... Well, nylon washer bolts, in other words, they had a grip to them. And it had a nylon washer in between for a nice... And you would just tighten it just to the right amount, and it would be good, like, fucking forever. And it would very... Mine, at least, very rarely went loose, you know. And if it did, you could adjust it pretty quickly. This uses a screw that goes through, like, a bell, like a cup. And then um, it pulls down the top, which is this, you know, part that screws on. But every once in a while, that bell comes loose. And you got to go in there, and you got to tighten the thing down. I suppose I could try and put a little Loctite on it or whatever. But then it's going to be stuck in there forever. Jesus. I'm like one minute on my video, and I'm like way off my agenda. I got the iPad today, and I have my little, my little agenda here. So starting with number one. Got my coffee here. Thanksgiving. Mmm. <laughs> I hope you had a rockin' Thanksgiving. It was pretty awesome here. Of course, going to bed at 2.45 in the morning. The night before probably isn't a good idea. I don't think I finally got upstairs. I posted that video at 2.45 a.m. And I probably got upstairs somewhere around, you know, 3.05, 3.10. And then I had to be up early because, you know, we had to get the bird in the oven. And, man, that bird came out freaking awesome. Of course, it was way too big for our party, but whatever. Um, it looked uh, impressive. And uh, the secret is you brine it, right? You toss it in a, in a big giant bucket. You put a garbage bag in it or whatever to make it a little nice and fresh. And then you you, you, you fill it with uh, salt water. A cup of water for every gallon of, uh, I mean a cup of salt for every gallon of water. And it uh, comes out great. What a difference it makes. And then you throw it in the oven, roast it up, Put it on a bunch of sliced apples, you know, a little bit of onion, a bunch of herbs. Freaking rocking. Came out great. So, uh, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. We had a really uh, good one here. Uh, next on the agenda, guitar neck snapping. That's what I have uh, written here. Uh, this neck on this is uh, slowly snapping off, it appears. Uh, there's a big crack that starts, it pretty much runs sort of like a like a Z, like a wavy uh, crack, right through the the screw hole uh, drillings. So it sort of starts here, runs down, goes across, connects on the other side, it's cracked in this little strip in the middle between the two bolts, then it continues on the other side, and it goes up a tiny bit on this side. It's, it's stronger on, on this side, right? Is that the side? Yeah. Very little bit on this side, probably goes up maybe an eighth of an inch. On the other side, it goes up like about an inch. It's, you know, it's pretty good. Well, maybe a half inch. Anyway, you can't really see it from the video. It's just not high enough resolution, but, um, you know, at this distance. But it's there. I, I should take some photos and, and post them up. But uh, it's very slowly seeming to break off. I did notice a little notch up here at the top. So maybe it is the product of some blunt force trauma. And now I'm thinking maybe my kids came down here because it wasn't like this when I got it. I went over this guitar pretty well before I, I picked it up, and I'm pretty sure that wasn't there. But maybe I did overlook it and the thing was cracked the whole time. I have no idea, but I don't think so. You know, I can see that crack there pretty well, and 
the first thing you do when you get a guitar with a Floyd Rose drilled through the back is you look at the screw uh, area and you make sure it's not cracked because with so little, so much tension and so little wood, it may tend to crack. So, um, yeah, no, I'm not looking, not looking good. So we'll see how long this one lasts. Um, I can probably, if it's a clean break, I can probably clamp it back on again with some, you know, Loctite um, or, uh, I mean, uh, tight bond or um, uh, hide glue, though that's a, a lot more work, but it's super strong. You know, hide glue, you have to, <clears throat> it comes um, in powder form, uh, you put it in a, uh, a heater, in fact, you're probably better off just to buy like a heater meant for it rather than sitting there with a thermometer and a double boiler trying to get it to the right temperature. Uh, or you could buy a deep fryer and see if the deep fryer can set its own temperature. Sometimes you can get a deep fryer on Craigslist for like 40 bucks. Works as both a waxer and a hot glue, I mean a um, uh, hide glue uh, heater. So that's a little tip for you because sometimes you see them out there pr pretty cheap and you, again it has to be able to control its temperature though. Not just have like low, medium, and high. You have to be able to like set the temperature. Sometimes they can set between say like 120 and I don't know, 350 or 400, something like that, maybe even higher. Anyway, we'll see what happens with this neck, because right now it... So, that brings me to my next point. <laughs> Blackouts. I was uh, looking to get uh, some guitar pickups, and because um, I have no shortage of guitars that need pickups. Really, the one I was thinking about was for the Ibanez RG470. Um, because those stock Ibanez pickups, they're pretty thin. They're very bright. I don't really like them. Even I like the Chinese pickups better than the pickups that are stock in that. So whatever they were using for process, I'm just not crazy about that stock pickup. I, I, I've gone back and said, like, oh, i got to be wrong on this. Uh, let me listen to it again. And they, no, no, that really does suck. <laughs> I'm not really crazy about it. So I, uh, <clears throat> I emailed my buddy uh, Fluff aka Ryan, aka Ryan.fluff.whatever. I have a link to his channel on my channel. Not to get too much of an aside here. What's up with the new YouTube uh, look? I think it's kind of lame. Lots of white space. Looks like just like a piece of paper with a bunch of shit thrown on it. Not, I'm not, I think they kind of fucked up with this one. Anyway, so <clears throat> I emailed him and um, he, uh, said, what do you like? He's like, well, I like Duncan's. He's like, I'm a big fan of Duncan's stuff, and uh, I like Blackouts. And uh, I was like, all right, um, let me look into it. So I checked on, on their website, and they have a very interesting pair. Um, this the regular Blackout, which is, you know, um, a high energy, you know, output. I mean, it's your standard, you know, active pickup set, just like EMG or... You know, I, I think uh, DiMarzio makes us a, a pair. You know, there's a lot of companies out there making active pickups. So this is like their Seymour Duncan's like active pickup. You know, the um, the blackout, and then uh, especially from you know for heavier stuff. And then they have one called Blackout Metal, which intrigued me. I was like, metal. <laughs> now you now you're talking. So I went on there and. Uh, What's interesting about the metal, and I think how it differentiates itself from the regular blackout, is that it has a two-gain, two-stage preamp. So on the bottom, each pickup has a preamp built into it. Uh, on the bottom of each uh, pickup, I'm not uh, well. On the bottom of the blackout metal, and they only make a bridge one. They don't make a neck one. So you have to put a regular blackout for the neck, and you put the uh, the blackout two, right, or the what they call I think the A B active blackout two, A B two B for bridge. Um, that uh, has a jumper on the bottom, just like in, in any computer, it has this like little two pin jumper. And uh, when the jumper's off and it's not connected, it runs just like a regular blackout would run. It's got, you know, all the balls and heaviness of a blackout. But when you put it on, you've unleashed Blackout 2 mode, <laughs> which is a lot more ballsy, right? It's got a, a it's like, like in, on steroids, it's like total overdrive. And um, 
which is awesome because if you, you need to go that little bit more, you know, these go to 13. <laughs> so, uh, uh, it has um, that two pin, but if you get creative, you could just run a two pin junction to a, a pass through thread, an on off switch and um, just run that back to a little switch. R really kind of like one of these switches, right? These little, you know, this is a three position, you'd get a two position, one, two, on, off. And then you could wire it, you know, up would be regular mode, but when you need that little extra, boom, just hit it and, you know, you're in full blown, um, you know, uh, full preamp mode. So. That's a very interesting, you can also do it with a push-pull knob, though the wiring on that would be a little bit, you'd have to think about it a little bit. <laughs> Whereas the uh, um, the on-off switch would be very easy, and, you know, th so I might do that eventually. So I, I was going to put it in this until I noticed the neck was snapping. <laughs> I wanted to put them in this. Uh, though these pickups aren't too bad, I'd probably move these pickups to one of my Chinese guitars, you know, because these are a little bit better than those. And... Um, you know, just sort of, you know, move it around a little bit. But uh, the jack on this is a knurled jack, you know. And that knurled jack um, is just a, a long threaded, right, uh, jack. And you just put like a, a like a ring bolt, what I would call a ring bolt, down on the back and, you know, just screw it down. And uh, you need the stereo one. You can't just run the, the mono or else the, the, the battery will be on all the time. You'll rip right through batteries. So the Ibanez has the same one. So I'm sort of like stuck until I get the proper jack um, putting it in the guitar that has a plate with the regular jack because that's what they come with. You know, that's another great thing about a lot of active pickups out there. They come with a bunch of stuff. Comes with pots, comes with a bunch of wiring, comes with the jack, so it makes it really uh, easy to install. And, um, I should mention this too, it comes in the package, um, the wiring for two volumes and two tones, your standard, you know, like Les Paul setup. But don't despair, because you can go right on the website, because I wanted to put it in this, and of course I have volume, volume, tone. They have a wiring diagram for that. They have a wiring diagram for volume, volume, tone, volume, tone, just a two-knob setup. So you can go on there and very easily get what you need to do to set it up correctly for the, you know, the layout you have. Um, they just don't print it out and put it in with the pickups, but you can just go right online and get it. So, Blackouts, they will be making an appearance soon. I think they're probably going to go in the yellow um, copy, custom cu custom copy, uh, at first. Because uh, that's just the easiest one to put it in. Just l literally the path of least resistance. Until I get the right jacket. And then it, may, it might go into this. It, it really, it's probably going to end up in that Ibanez uh, RG, uh, I mean, uh, S470. Uh, next thing on the list. I might have my little coffee here. Uh, Gary Moore. Um, like a lot of you, I freaking love Gary Moore. I think he's an incredible guitar player. And, um, it just, uh, deepened my love for his playing when I saw this week. And it's been around for a long time, so I'm a little late to the party. But, uh, Blues for Jimmy, which is a set he does, you can find it on YouTube, where he just rips, I mean, from the opening... <laughs> Sometimes I want to play it up here. I mean, he is just... He is just nailing it. And he is so fast. He still has his... I mean, now remember, this is in 2007. This wasn't that long ago. This was like five years ago. And uh, so he's probably, I gotta think, he's in his late 40s, maybe early 50s at this point, you know? I mean, uh, he, yeah, he's a, he's a pretty young guy. And, uh, man, he, I mean, uh, he is killing it. 
just so fast, so right on. Nails all the right arrangements. I loved it. I watched it like, you know, I think the set is about an hour long. And I think I watched it like three times. <laughs> Could not stop. Just throw it on in the background. I just loved it, you know. He, he just nails it. Um, what else is uh, up? Um... Lotus Land. If you've never heard of uh, Lotus Land, um, a lot of reverb on. This is a stock patch in Guitar Rig 5. This is called, uh, I think, uh, Big 80 Stereo or something like that. Lotus Land is a Rush tribute band, and uh, I'm going to see them uh, tomorrow night. They're uh, playing out at uh, Foxborough in, uh, at uh, Patriot Place at um, the Showcase Live. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm going to be meeting a few buddies out there, checking that out. Uh, if you've never heard of Lotus Land, I recommend you go on uh, YouTube and look them up and uh, check them out. They're... They sound like Rush. I mean, that guy, it's really about that singer, that guy Chris. I mean, he just, he sounds incredible. I'd love to get them down here. They're a, they're a local band. I'd love to get them down here for an interview and maybe a, uh, get them to, you know, play a song. Uh, I have an electronic drum kit and superior drums and, you know, can run everybody through software and get a pretty decent sound. Got the e old mic and, uh, you know, could probably get them sounding pretty damn good, so... Uh, I'd love to get them over here at some point for an interview, but um, <clears throat> I'm going to see them tomorrow night, uh, and uh, I recommend you check them out. Just check out, <clears throat> um, they do a montage where they just talk about the band, and they do a few seconds of a bunch of different, you know, famous uh, Rush tunes. And listen to him on um, Free Will, right? Because Free Will has a couple of passages that Getty can't hit anymore. You know, I mean, he's getting older, his voice is deepening. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, this guy who's younger is able to nail it. You know, his voice has still got that quality, still has the range, right? His range hasn't shrunk uh, with age to the point where he can't hit those notes any longer. Uh, just ask Sting, <laughs> right? These guys get older, their voices get a little deeper. You know, it's harder and harder for them to hit the, to hit the, uh, the notes. Um, so that's Lotus Land. I should maybe put a link in the description. I'll see if I can find it. That's the other thing I've been listening to is um, a lot of Ozzy lately. I don't know why. Next up on the list, got my old iPad here. Um, Lotus Land, uh, no, not Lotus Land. We just did that. Uh, Steve Marchena. Steve Marchena is coming back. Um, been trying to get him back over here, but we've been both pretty busy. Check out the triple insulator cup. It's cold down here in the basement. Um, so Steve is coming back. Uh, we've been trying to get uh, a date together. And of course, like the one date he's free, I'm busy that day. <laughs> so <laughs> we're sort of um, not finding common ground uh, for a little while now. But uh, uh, maybe a, a mid to end of January is probably going to be the earliest he's going to make it back here. So, but we're working on it. And uh, little teaser on that: we're both going to be playing acoustic. I'm going to break out the Laravi. Now, of course, I'll restring it before then because the strings are like three years old. But uh, I'm going to break the Laravi out. You guys can check out the Laravi. And then um, he's going to bring over a bunch of like uh, weird capos. Capos that make alternate tunings. You know, capos that like are just harmonics. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to checking. He says they're brilliant. So I'm really looking forward to uh, checking that out. So Machina is coming up. And I think the last thing on my list here is, uh, I don't know if you've heard it, but there's a great um, version of the Christmas song running around, which is basically a study in the major scale. <clears throat> and 
the guy, um, instead of singing the lyrics, sings the uh, intervals. So he's like, octave, down to the subdominant, you know? <laughs> so, like, that a major third. It's just, it's funny. So, um, I recommend you check that out. It's a good way to, uh, to, to get uh, intervals, uh, you know, with a little bit of... Uh, audio to go along with them in a in a context that you recognize, right? Instead of just, it's like right, you know, what does that mean? Uh, in fact, the really good intervallic studies will give you like the opening notes, you know, like um, like that. an octave, and they'll be able to, to to give you something that you hopefully will recognize. Um, Though, you know, that what happens is the songs get older and a younger generation comes in and they don't know any of those. They're like, I never heard of that. So it has to be really timeless stuff that, like, everybody's familiar. Which is why Christmas songs work so well. Because everybody's, you know, heard it. But, uh... uh what's it? You can almost like hear it in your head. Merry Christmas. Meet the Flintstones. All right, guys. Uh, you probably see me once or twice before Christmas, so um, you know I have a little bit of. My, my workload's down a little bit right now. I have a little bit more time, so I'm going to try and step up the videos while I can. All right? All right. That's about it. This is more of a blog video. <laughs> I guess all my videos are sort of blog videos, but anyway, this one seemed a little bit extra bloggy. Uh, Alright guys, rock on!